Have you ever wondered what happens if you hook 50 of these up in parallel? I inherited a box of them, so we're gonna do it and see what happens. These power supplies, rated at five volts and two amps, are galvanically isolated, so I should be able to do whatever I want with the output without harming anything. But first, we'll do some math to make sure we're in the ballpark. I tested a single supply earlier, and here's what I got. The supply generated five volts with a load of zero to two amps. Above that, voltage dropped as it was overcurrented up to a dead short where five amps was developed. So a max power output of 10 watts. 60 supplies will therefore generate 600 watts. If we assume these supplies are only 50% efficient, that's 1200 watts. At 120 volts from the wall, we'll use 10 amps, which is not enough to trip the 15 amp circuit breaker of the outlet we're using. We'll need to deliver this current somewhere, so let's look at the conductor. The resistance of a meter of 10 gauge wire is a few milliohms. So with I squared R and at 120 amps, our conductor must dissipate 47 watts. This is about the energy a soldering iron can put out, but over a great surface area. It'll get hot, but not too bad. The voltage drop on the wire is calculated as well. Using Ohm's law, we'd expect to have about 0.39 volts across the wire. All right, so the plan is to wire banks of 10 of these together. I'll just connect straight to the terminals, attach one of these cords, and then wire all the outputs in parallel to these terminal blocks. Then, the banks of 10 can be connected together with big cores and applied to loads. Using my FLIR Pi Cam, no single supply looks abnormally hot, so I think we're ready to go. It sparks, but the voltage is too low to sustain an arc for welding. But it can generate enough current to melt the rod. The spark fund flame is too resistive and thus not enough current goes through to get it hot. When welded in a loop, however, the resistance is halved and the current flows. A quarter, on the other hand, has too little resistance, and thus it won't heat even though over 100 amps is going through. My wiring harness gets hot instead. A fork is about the perfect resistance to let the supplies operate near their intended operating points, and it glows continuously. So there you have it. High currents and low voltages can be used to directly heat metals. The supplies complain and whine, but they work together and dutifully attempt to regulate their outputs. And even the most basic math can get you pretty far in selecting conductor sizes. Thanks for watching.